Since the first day of its full-scale invasion of Ukraine, Russia has relied on long-term missiles as one of its many military advantages. Ukraine has had almost no such weapons, but it seems that this may soon change, writes DW. The publication notes that the Allies have transferred a limited number of crews and ballistic missiles to Ukraine, but they have a short range and the partners also prohibit the use of these missiles on Russian territory. To change the situation, Ukraine is working on implementing its own missile program. On Independence Day, President Volodymyr Zelensky announced that Ukraine had successfully used a new weapon for the first time, the so-called Palyanitsya missile drone. The main targets of the Palyanitsya combat drones will likely be about 20 Russian military airfields from which Russia shells Ukraine. Some of them are located 600 to 700 kilometers from the Ukrainian border. Director of the Ukrainian analytical group Defense Express, Serhi Zaguretz, told DW that due to the lack of publicly available data, it is impossible to accurately assess the effectiveness of Palyanitsya. Zaguretz told DW that in recent years, Ukraine has achieved certain successes in its missile program. For example, the series of anti-tank weapons such as the Stugna and Kosa are now in mass production, or the R360 Neptune anti-ship missile. This product of the Kyiv Loop Design Bureau has been in service with the troops since 2020, as well as the RK360MS coastal missile system designed to detect and destroy enemy ships of various classes, he said. The Neptune missile has a 150 kilogram warhead and a range of up to 300 kilometers. On April the 13th, 2022, one of the most significant events of the Ukrainian-Russian war took place. Two Neptune missiles sank the Russian flagship, Moskva. In 2023, it became known that Ukrainian developers had modified the Neptune sea-based missile into versions capable of hitting both ships and ground targets. According to media reports, last year Ukraine also deployed S-200 air defense missiles to strike deep into Russia. These missiles are now being modified to also be able to hit ground targets. The country also uses modernized Soviet Tu-141 Strids reconnaissance drones. These drones have a turbo engine and can reach speeds of about 1,000 km per hour. The missile in question is the Sapsan short-range missile, which has a fuselage diameter of 0.9 meters and a range of 500 kilometers. The missile is known under the export name Grom-2. It is noted that Ukraine has manufactured Grom-2 for Saudi Arabia with a diameter of 0.6 meters and a range of 280 kilometers. Since the beginning of the war, the development of the Sapsan has not been publicly commented on, although Russia has repeatedly stated that it shot down Ukrainian Grom-2 missiles. Ukrainian defense forces began their invasion of Russia's Kursk region on August the 6th, and over the course of that month, the Kursk operation has significantly changed the situation on the front line, as military expert and retired Ukrainian army colonel Roman Svitan noted in a commentary to Channel 24, the Ukrainian military now has the ability to tie down the Russians even more. According to him, the Kursk operation changed the architecture of military operations, creating a new northern front. We have finally turned towards the enemy, now we have the northern front. That's how it should have been, the expert noted. According to him, how events will develop in the Kursk region will depend on the number of troops that the Russian command will transfer there. At the same time, the Ukrainian armed forces will be able to tie down thousands of troops of Russians in this area. The Kursk operation could go from control to tying down the Russians. Then we will tie up hundreds of thousands of Russian troops if they decide to stop us, Svitan said. He also stressed that the Ukrainian military needs to carry out strikes towards Moscow and not stop moving in this direction. Then, according to the expert, the Russians will be even more confused. Commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine, Alexander Sirsky, said in an interview with CNN that the Ukrainian armed forces offensive in the Kursk region has slowed down the Russian army's advance in the Pokrovsk sector. Everything possible is being done to ensure that the town of Pokrovsk is not lost. Defenses are being strengthened there. Of course, the enemy has concentrated his best trained units in the Pokrovsk direction, but we have deprived him of the opportunity to maneuver his units and redeploy his reinforcement units from other areas, said Sirsky.
He noted that despite the fact that Russia has not moved many troops from the Pokrovsk region, with the exception of one marine brigade, the enemy can no longer maneuver reserves as before. As a result, the enemy's pressure is easing in other areas. According to Sirsky, the number of artillery attacks and the intensity of offensive actions have decreased. The Pokrovsk direction remains the most problematic for us. In other areas, the situation has become more stable. Therefore, I believe that this strategy was chosen correctly and will bring us the desired result, he concluded. As a reminder, Mykola Melnik, a company commander of the 47th Separate Mechanized Brigade, recently stated that there is no stabilization in the Pokrovsk sector and that Russian invaders continue to advance.